So here it is, Sunday, January the 20th, and it's a balmy 15.4 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So what do you think would be a good thing to do? Bundle up in your warmest clothes and go outside to see what's going on. Well, the snow's falling nice and heavy. This is my backyard, northeastern Pennsylvania. Lots of birds in the trees. This is a prairie fire crab tree, grass sparrows, dark-eyed junco, purple sparrows. And there, of course, are chickadees, blue jays, cardinals, lots of things going on. But the cool thing is, look how quiet it is out here. This is my lower meadow. Come spring, this is where I'm going to be planting all of my pollinator flowers. And I even designated the space with his pollinator habitat sign from the Xerxes Society. So I want to plant his up here. I'm going to be starting that all inside next month, February. So what I really like about this time of year is how quiet it is. What I don't like is there's nothing to do with the bees. They're just in their hives. We've done what we can do for them. They've done what they can do for themselves. These are my solitary bee nests here with the little tubes. They're about 3% occupied orchard bees, blue orchard bees, and so on. Just listen to the wind. It comes and goes. All the hives are in nice upright positions, which is a great way to find them. I like to look at the entrances, see how snowbound they are. So we get to walk around, but you know what? They've got the feed they're going to have, they have the honey stored they're going to store, and we're just waiting for spring. You can hear a jet passing overhead. Flow hive on the right. See, they're open and vented. This one has a removable tray. That's handy. The way to bee building. We've got the ivory beehive on the porch there, covered in snow. They're all clustered in the left third there, which is near the entrance. I find that interesting. Lots of capped honey. I think they're fine too. All the observation hives in this building are 10 degrees above the space heat. Unheated building, of course. There's a couple of cameras on this hive. That's because I had a mouse that was really intent on getting in here. He finally gave up. There's a B-Smart Designs bottom board down underneath. The mouse had a bunch of grass on that. But it also has stopped visiting that spot. A very small number of deer mice survive winter here in the state of Pennsylvania. All the other hives seem to have openings, so they're venting. This one looks like it's not even strapped down. Affame clamped together, but underneath that snow cap, there are bricks piled up there. So it's doing okay. Sitting on a B-Smart stand, but I had to create a shim to get it up higher to keep it well away from skunk reach. Just hear the snow coming down. This one I had to wrap because the feeder shim at the top had a little gap in it and it was too late for the bees to close it up on their own. So I wrapped it with landscape cloth. Now they've got their own opening. So they're getting air completely under their control. That's a flow hive too. Apame hives handle this weather really well. Now they do have <coughs> complete snow cover on their landing boards, but they're vented through the top, as you can notice. So they are winter ready. So I thought since I'm outside, feeling warm, wearing my winter jumper, I've got nice insulated boots on, good hood. Why not just sneak around out here and see what I see? We have lots of wildlife. 
The trees we're looking at here I planted myself back in 2000. So being that this is 2024, we know how long it took for them to grow. And the closest large tree on the left there was a silver maple. This is a blue spruce. You know, I thought ahead for days like this and planted lots of evergreens so that the birds would have shelter. We have lots of wildlife here. Those woods in the distance, Grand Central Station for deer, black bear that are hibernating right now, fox, coyotes, bobcats, squirrels. We have all kinds of stuff out here. Mink, they're even seeing river otters to the west of me. So if you spend time out here, you can let your imagination run wild a little bit. I think it's great to just go out and be quiet and see what you see. I've got hawthorn trees here, flowering pears, trees that bear berries. We've also got filberts, hazelnuts. So the deer and turkey like to come and eat those. Did you know that at one time there were so few deer in the state of Pennsylvania. They were all hunted out. So they had to bring them in and restock the state from other states. Along around the turn of the century, they basically cleared the forests throughout Pennsylvania for farming and agriculture, for construction. So it feels good to plant trees. Look at those blue spruce on the left in the distance there. I put all those in when they were just a foot tall. Now look at them. Way in the distance is a bench I like to sit on sometimes. But I guess since I'm feeling warm, I'll walk around and bring you with me. Here's the tree line to the east. This is normally full of goldenrod at the end of the year, asters. Have some apple trees here, some willows, and then mixed hardwoods in the background. We're gonna go into those woods. How am I keeping my hands warm? Electric, heated, gloves. My wife gave these to me for Christmas. And the cool part too is Whatever that fabric is, it works on touch screens. So I'm trying to walk quietly through the deep snow so I can go into the woods. Maybe see something interesting. So these are not old woods. There's not a tree in here that was growing before 1900. In fact, the person that owned this property ahead of me tried to sell off all the lumber. Tried to get people to come in and clear cut it for him, and they wouldn't. They said it was irresponsible. He did get the Amish to come in. They cut a bunch of lumber and removed it. So I parked myself underneath this tree. It's a hemlock tree. Just let the snow build up around me. Maybe that'll help hide me from the wildlife. Maybe we'll see something cool. I'm gonna realize it's middle of the afternoon, so I'm gonna have to stay out here for several hours before I might see something. The deer have left their footprints in the snow, but even that's being covered up so fast I can't see where they were walking. I was talking to a small mammal biologist who said, you know, people just don't look up into the trees. They miss a lot of animals that way. So I'm thinking, maybe there's an owl up there. Off to my left, I could hear a woodpecker pecking away at one of the trees. 
Then I was thinking, here I am up against this hemlock tree. Something might be moving around behind me and I'd miss it. You know, we have mink and weasels and fisher cats. They hunt right through winter. I've had those run right in front of me in the past. So the spot I picked here is right where the clearing comes up against the woods. That's where I see a lot of animal tracks. But there again, maybe even this movement, just so I can get a video, gives me a way. The other cool thing is you can hear the wind coming. You know the snow's about to blow. Maybe big chunks will fall off the trees and cover me up completely. Then I'll see something. Decided to look straight up at the hemlock tree I'm under. Hemlock trees were used for a lot of things. Even their roots were used as a sort of thread by Native Americans to cinch things together. I also figure maybe when the wind picks up, animals will come through the woods because their movements would be covered. But I heard it's the opposite. That when the wind really picks up, animals of prey, like deer, just hunker down and stay put. It is still deer season. So I figured maybe I'm safe in my own yard. Hopefully nobody shoots me. Another thing I think about while I'm looking into the distant woods here, there's a group of people that actively hunt Bigfoot. So I'm thinking, where do they see them? How many sightings do you think there were in the state of Pennsylvania? Well, apparently over 1,300 sightings in this state alone. How come we don't get videos of them? Would they look like trees? I'd think they'd be near riverbeds and things like that. It'd be cool to get a glimpse of one. You know, something other people haven't seen. There must be some mysterious thing still out in the woods these days. I hope it's true. I learned that I can't really make fun of the Bigfoot hunters because some really credible people claim to have seen them. My question for them is, where was your camera? Why didn't you get a shot? How do they stay hidden? Are they so deep in the mountains? Are they among old growth timber that never loses its leaves? Are they along rivers? Is there a cave system? I'd like to see something. So you just sit still and wait. Not even a cottontail rabbit came through. We have coyotes, but they tend to howl right around sunset. How cool would it be to get the barks and yelps of coyotes on a snowy night?
I want to look behind me, but I can't because I give myself away. Maybe it's just enough just to be outside without making a noise. You hear things just out of view. Something walking, tree branches clanking together. When the wind picks up, you have to be careful because I have lots of ash trees that are dead. The ash borer beetle killed them. So without warning, sometimes one of those big trees will just fall. Or the top will come off and drive itself deep into the ground. That's why I feel safer up against this hemlock tree. Listen to that, off to the left. It's a woodpecker. I can hear it. But I don't see it. But I stayed nice and warm. That was the good news. My electric gloves, my hood, waterproof jumper, warm boots. If it got colder, I do have an electric vest. I have electric socks if I needed them, but I didn't today. In fact, the more snow that piled over me, the warmer I felt. So that's about it for this Saturday. It's time to head in. So here we are on Sunday. <clears throat> Look what I found. That is a Cooper's hawk hiding in an evergreen tree. You know what it's doing? waiting for small songbirds to fly into that tree and then it's going to grab them with its feet kill them and eat them these things are pretty territorial too i was proud of myself for spotting it you can hear the other birds around the good news is it didn't have anything in its talon the bad news for the hawk is that it didn't have anything in its talons I'd be okay if it grabbed a morning dove or two. You'd think those would be easy pickings for a hawk like this. Sometimes they chase my chickens, but they don't get anything. Pretty small as far as hawks go. Good news is it pushes out sharp shinned hawks and other competition. So my grandson showed up, of course. First order of business for him. He wants to go out and make sure the entrances to the beehives are open. First thing I notice is how noisy his snowsuit is. Swish, swish, swish. He's not going to sneak up on anything. I'm also wondering why he's walking past all these hives. Where are you headed? So I call him back over to look at the Apame hives. And he's got his little dowel rod with him. So he can poke a hole. We don't need big openings, just little openings. It's going to rain, the temperature is going to rise. The bees need to be able to come out. So there you go. He's eight years old. And there comes a bee out right there. Somebody wanted to go. The bees do need to make cleansing flights. Some people may wonder when it's this cold out. Why would a bee fly out? Well, they'd rather fly out than die inside the hive. So he's just making sure they have an opening. OK, 
gives him something to do and he feels good about the bees knowing that he's checked on them. Look at the vent space here. This one really didn't need to be cleared. We let him do it anyway. That's a Bee Smart Designs hive cleaning tool. They gave these out at the expo. So Quinn goes around hive to hive. It's something to do. Breaking up the winter a little bit. Got metal entrance guards on some of these. Anything that was bigger than 3 eighths of an inch, we put a plate on the front to keep the mice out. I think we're at the time of year. We don't have to worry about too many new mice showing up. I think they've pretty much established themselves to survive winter. Under the snow, voles and shrews and things like that are on the go. So they move without us even seeing them, and those evergreens certainly help provide shelter and cover and needles and debris for them to build their nests with. Although I noticed they make their nests out of lichen and moss and all kinds of stuff, grasses. Now he didn't have electric gloves, so his hands actually get cold pretty quick. Later on his boots came off. Don't even know how that happened. Now the hive he really cares about is the one that houses his first colony of bees. So he's got to get to them if he goes to any of them. Once again, it's peace of mind. They're in a single deep box. But they have a feeder shim on them. They've got fondant just in case. And this is old hive equipment. He picked that hive number too, 50. He just wants to know that they're in there. And they are, of course. They're alive. Yeah, I got a couple dead honeybees. So that's it. He's checked on things. We walked the property. We didn't get to see a Bigfoot. But it's something to do in winter. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.